How is he going to be on the benches? More specifically, Dolphin Fans Nation here coming at you with an edition of the BTB Show. I plan on doing this every Monday throughout the NFL season to talk about the game the day before there was, preview uh, you know, the upcoming game, just talk about what's going on with the Miami Dolphins throughout the season, uh, you know, regular, every week, and hopefully, if this goes well, carry this tradition on throughout the offseason as well. But let's go ahead and get started with this edition as we have an NFL game this Thursday. The first preseason game of the Brian Flores era of this new rebuild and new organization. And that, of course, is against the Atlanta Falcons this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. I'll get into that a little bit more. But also this morning we had the first official depth chart released by the Miami Dolphins themselves. And these things are always a little bit up in the air as far as how serious to take them. Uh, because sometimes they may be sending a message to one player or particularly rookies by having them on the second or third string. Uh, when really when it's all said they're going to be first teamers. And especially with where the team is now, you know, continuing to rebuild and develop. And so many battles going on that, you know, we're going on heading into training camp and are continuing to roll through the preseason odds are a lot of this is going to change anyway so if you you know if there's a guy that isn't listed exactly where you wanted him i don't think it's quite time to panic just yet because the odds are again a lot of this stuff is going to change before the regular season rolls around and you know after these guys get the chance to impress in the preseason but to kind of break it down ryan fitzpatrick is still listed as the starter brian Flores did say in the interview uh, that he's been very impressed with this last week from Josh Rosen. A lot of the reporters have been much kinder to him. Uh, you know, talking about a lot of impressive passes, a lot more deep balls down the field, looking really sharp in a lot of areas, starting to get a little bit better idea of this offense. And Flores certainly gave him credit for that, but also stating that Fitzpatrick just se clearly seems a step ahead of Rosen at this point. I don't really have any disagreements there from what I've heard and the little that I've been able to see. You know, I'll get a chance to see both quarterbacks uh, the second week of preseason myself and maybe have a better idea of what it looks like then. Also, you know, of course, Rosen, he's going to, you know, he was always going to have to impress in these preseason games, these game-like situations to win the job anyway. So Ryan Fitzpatrick being listed, not terribly concerning. Uh, Kenyon Drake and Kalen Balaj are listed as the starting running backs. Uh, you know, I think Kalen Balaj has starting running back potential, so this certainly doesn't bother me. Some of the more Kenyon Drake fans may be upset, but really what this means is it's a one-two running back punch. It's probably going to be a lot like what you saw with Kenyon Drake and Frank Gore uh, last year. You know, Drake getting plenty of action as a pass catcher, maybe a couple of kick returns. But I think you'll see him uh, run the ball a lot more than you saw last year as well. While Kalen Balaj, a rookie last year, sh has shown some impressive moments. Um, a lot of people have credited his health and conditioning over the offseason. He's going to get a chance. The wide receiving core isn't too crazy, although one thing that is important to note is Trenton Irvin, an undrafted free agent that I didn't even have making the team. I think I had him making the practice squad in my uh, recent 53-man predictions. He's listed as like the fourth or fifth wide receiver on this team, right behind you know the Kenny Stills and Albert Wilson and King Grant. So... Definitely an interesting guy to look out for. A lot of people feel like Preston Williams, the other undrafted wide receiver, is a lock to make this team as well. And then, of course, you have guys like Alan Hearns and Devontae Parker. And really, the team's only going to keep five, maybe six wide receivers at most. So, going to be interesting to see who is the odd man out and loses some of these battles. The offensive line right now, the starting offensive line is Laramie Tunsil. That's the one thing we know is going to happen. Uh, you know, one of the best left tackles in the game. Really one of the, probably the only thing right now to feel good about when it comes to this offensive line. Uh, you know, Michael Dieter, uh, third round pick this past draft. Probably going to make it a left guard as well. He's right now listed as the starter. Uh, Daniel Kilgore right now holds on to the starting center job. And then, of course, the two biggest positions that are open for grabs is the right guard and right tackle. And by that, I mean, not too many guys have really looked that well. I've heard a few good things about Jesse Davis. He right now is listed as the starter at right guard. And then Jordan Mills, who came over from the Buffalo Bills in the offseason, he is listed as the starting right tackle for now. But again, considering some of the struggles on that side of the offensive line, wouldn't be surprised if that changes uh, by the time the regular season rolls around. Down. Defensively, Charles Harris and um, who I think it was Charles Harris and Nate Orcher are listed as the starting defensive ends. 
Again, could that change? It probably will. I think Jonathan Ledbetter and Jonathan Woodard are both actually making a good case for that as well. Uh, you have Christian Wilkins, the first-round pick, listed as your starting defensive tackle behind him. Guys like Devon Gotcha and Vincent Taylor are certainly going to get in there. Linebacker, no surprise there. We have, it, Right now, they're listing Jerome Baker, Kiko Alonso, and Raycorn McMillan as the main guys, with Sam Eguivon, the Canadian Football League standout, as kind of the top backup to this point. Um, you know, cornerback, again, no surprises, Xavier Howard, number one, Eric Rowe, number two. Now, it's actually interesting because with Minka Fitzpatrick and the fact that he's really going to share some time, at, most likely at nickel cornerback and obviously safety, where were they going to list him? Uh, they really just listed him as a backup safety. Uh, again, that's one of those things I wouldn't freak out too much. I think Minka is one of the best players on this uh, entire team, going to continue to grow in, towards that uh, claim. So he's going to get a, more than enough time on the field. I think he's just kind of a jack of all trades type of player and going to get moved around rather than just being listed as one starting guy. Uh, Bobby McCain, yeah, it's official. He's now a free safety. He's gone from cornerback these last three or so seasons with the Dolphins. He's now switching over to safety. So when the preseason regular season comes around, going to be interesting to see how he adjusts to that. And then Rashad Jones right now is listed as the starting strong safety, although reports came out over the weekend that he's dealing with an injury. And if that doesn't clear up, he could get placed to start the season on the PUP list. And if that's the case, you must miss the first six weeks of the season. If you get put on that list, you cannot play those first six weeks. So he would not come back to the team uh, until week seven. So going to be interesting to see over this next month of the preseason if Rashad Jones, how much does he play? What do we hear about that injury? And if he can stay off that list. Otherwise, I think, again, that's going to be a situation where at least for those first six weeks, you're going to see more of Minka Fitzpatrick and more of the young guys behind Bobby McCain and uh, Rashad Jones. CJ McDonald may also get in there as well. And then, of course, the special teams, that's probably the least surprising maybe on this team, considering that none of them have any competition. The kicker, the punter, or the long snapper, all as you would expect. So that's, you know, the depth chart for now, and that's kind of the situation. Again, going to be interesting to get into this first preseason the game. The one thing I want to see is what do they do with the quarterback position? Because typically, when you have a guy that you feel is your starter, you give him this first preseason game, you know, traditionally maybe four or six plays, get him out of there halfway through the first quarter, you're done. I think it's probably going to be a quarter for Fitzpatrick, a quarter for Rosen, and then the second half they'll give off to Jake Rudolph and, you know, the third and fourth stringers trying to, you know, win their jobs or whatever. So it's going to be interesting. And, again, with the second and third preseason game going around, you may see half a game for one, half a game for the other. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that quarterback battle, how that time is divided up throughout the preseason. And, again, a lot of these other situations, you know, the starting tight end battle, um, you know, the – some of the linebackers and the players on defense, Mika Fitzpatrick, who I just mentioned, where is he going to fit in this new look defense? How does Bobby McCain adjust to moving to safety? And of course, probably most importantly right now, how is this offensive line looking? This hasn't been the kindest words for it so far. They've even had to make a coaching change. So with the preseason coming around, how does this offensive line look when you make it a uh, matchup against other NFL defenses? And probably last but not least, how does Brian Flores look on the sideline calling plays? Obviously, it's the preseason. You're not going to get everything. But, you know, can you start to kind of get him an idea of the team Brian Flores wants and what he may do in certain situations? So lots to look forward to. I'll definitely be here to talk about it and some of the news that breaks down over the week and this weekend. But hope you guys have a good one. Dolphins football is back, guys. We have made it through the long wait of the offseason. And now it's time to watch some Miami Dolphins football.